if you're trying to maximize your results um, and get a great physique and uh, also maximize the time you spend, that's a, there's nothing wrong with that. But when 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 they say when you hear someone say ten minutes and it's just as good as a 45 minute or hour uh, well placed uh, door done workout. That's just plain wrong. You are listening to the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, uh, we address something that's going on around right now in the podcast world. There's a guy going around talking about why weightlifting is a waste of time. Of course, we totally and completely disagree. And of course, he's selling a piece of equipment. Uh, to try to make some money right now off of some of these claims. So in this episode, we tackle some of the claims and why they're false. And we also talk about why free weights are still among some of the best pieces of equipment you can use for resistance training. Um, Now, here's the deal. We have been trainers for a very long time. Adam, Justin, and myself, between the three of us, have trained thousands of people, everyday people, and help them get into better shape. We have a lot of experience, uh, over 60 years between the three of us. We know what gets people to respond. We know what gets bodies to change. We know what really, really works. That's why we write workouts. We've created MAPS workout programs for different people and different goals. These are well-written workouts, well-programmed workouts that get people phenomenal results. If you want to try a workout that actually works, one that's written by real personal trainers, Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, check out the programs, find the one that works best for you, sign up, try it out for a full month. If it doesn't blow your mind, you can always return it for a full refund. We have a guarantee on every one of our programs. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. This episode is also brought to you by Paleo Valley. Paleo Valley makes some pretty awesome products. Uh, They make an organ complex supplement, so if you like to get the nutritional uh, value of eating liver, kidney, and heart, but don't like the taste, uh, and it's you know, a little squeamish, try their organ supplement. You can also try some of their meat sticks. That's our favorite. These are grass-fed meat sticks you can take anywhere. Great macro profile, healthy, high in protein. They're super delicious. It's the best jerky I've ever had in my entire life. It's not dry. Tastes very, very fresh. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount on all of their products. Just go to paleovalley.com. Uh, forward slash mind pump. That's P A L E O valley.com forward slash mind pump and get 15% off your first order. Did you guys get DMs on that on that episode on Ben Greenfield's podcast? No, you guys just showed me this. Why weightlifting is a waste of time? I'm familiar with a guy. Yeah, John uh, Jaquish. The he, mm-hmm. he's Very been clickbaity title. He's been popping up in my Instagram feed for at least a year or two now. Yeah, well, he's selling a book and he has a resistance band bar. Apparatus. It's like five hundred and fifty bucks for a resistance band. He's pretty jack looking too. He yeah. is. He looks natural to me. Strange. Me. Are you be, <laughs> no. Don't be a hater. I know. Don't no, be you, a hater. you know, um I want to address I wanted to address that podcast because uh I listened to what he said on the podcast. I've heard what he says on other things, and it's all so wrong that uh, it needs to be Totally addressed. Well, I don't think it's all wrong. There's some truth to some of the stuff that he's talking about. In fact, I don't think that our good buddy Ben was the best person to interview him on this conversation because Ben is uh, Ben uses that. What's that machine called that he's all about? Uh, I don't remember. Does he use the ARX? Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. He 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 he's been promoting that for a very long time. So he's all about the Dave Asprey ten minute, fifteen minute. You know. Uh, super. Every biohacker, everybody in the longevity space, like geeks out about the least amount of time possible ever that you can work out and like gain some kind of benefit from. Yeah. Well. Look, okay. And I'm okay with that. But when you say it's better than yes, this the, is the then, distinction. Then the the better way of training when you're saying it's better than you know uh, progressive overload and volume and straight sets. That's when I have a problem. Is you know doing a ten minute one set to failure uh, routine for each body part better than nothing for some people? Which it is. Oh yeah. Is it in the same neighborhood as proper traditional resistance training? Not even close. You know this argument was made a long time ago. Um, in the nineteen seventies, there was a bodybuilder, Mike Menser, who. Uh, he, okay, so you guys know who, Ar- who? God, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Inventor of Nautilus equipment. Maybe you can look it up for me. Arthur Jones. Thank Jones. you, Arthur Jones. So, Doctor Arthur Jones invented Nautilus equipment. This was some of the first popular, like uh, selectorized equipment. 
And his goal was to create resistance equipment that was superior to free weights. And one of the ways that he marketed this was he conducted a study. And really what it was, it wasn't a study, it was kind of a marketing thing, but he brought in Casey Viator, who was a bodybuilder at the time. In fact, Casey Viator was one of these phenom bodybuilders. I think he won, I want to say Mr. America or Mr. Universe. Back then there were a lot of competitions like the Mr. Olympia at the age of 18. So this guy was like this freak of nature. He brings him in and at the time Casey Viator had gone from being built to being very deconditioned. Uh, apparently he stopped working out, whatever. Brought him in, so now he's lost lots of muscle, that stuff. And he take, took him through uh, a study on one person where he trained him um, on Nautilus equipment alone. And the way he trained him was he would do these like super intense single sets to failure per body part mm -hmm. rather than tr the traditional resistance training, you know, bodybuilding routine. Like at the time, Arnold Schwarzenegger was real popular and he would do, you know, 20 sets per body part and that kind of thing. And then he measured Casey Viator's progress. Now, Casey Viator made tremendous progress. Uh, but people in the who understand uh, how the body responds understand he went in there very deconditioned. A lot of the gains that came that came on his body it were was novel too. It was well, it was it was uh, muscle memory. He had he went in losing lots of muscle. Probably came off anabolic steroids. Went on during the study, and he gained tremendous amounts of muscle. But he used that as a pivot as a way to market Nautilus equipment. Well, anyway, he got the attention of Mike Menser. Mike Menser put out a book called Heavy Duty where he said doing one set to failure was all you needed to do to stimulate muscle growth hmm. and got some followers to follow along. Um, but this, there's been many studies done on this yeah. and the studies show that volume is also important for muscle growth and that going to failure uh, is actually too much intensity for most people yeah. most of the time. Well, <clears throat> I mean, to me, this just screams like trying to narrow it down to one specific thing to simplify it to the consumer. So it's nothing more than a marketing ploy uh, to really highlight some of the benefits that we already know about rubber bands, which they do provide benefits. I don't disagree that they should find a way in a, a workout routine, but this is not going to replace uh, free weights ever. It's just not going to happen in terms of like, uh, you know, all the benefits that you're going to get from free weights uh, in conjunction with rubber bands. Well, yeah. is there is there a single statement that you find that he he said in that interview that is flawed or that is is miss is lacking? Like, what do, what do you see that? What do you, what do you have the biggest qualm with well, this? Because Justin's right. There's we've already talked about the benefits of bands. Right, so uh, we don't disagree with that. I think they're an, inc an incredible tool, and there's lots of great research around them. So you, basically, this is what he's utilizing. It's a band on a, it's a bar connected to a rubber band that I think a plate that you stand on or something like that. Um, what is it? What is it? You have the biggest exactly? Do you have the biggest problem with this by the statement of him saying that weightlifting is a waste of time? Yeah, well, he says a lot of stuff in there that's marketing based. It wasn't very much uh, real uh, science or study that was included in the conversation. He said something like free weights load the joints more than muscles. Um, and then referred to, you know, if you just want to throw weights around, um, you know, and train your ego, then use free weights. Um, but that's just not true. Um, Lots of generalizations. It's super. I mean, okay. I kind of get what he's trying to say with the joints versus muscle. Uh, I guess if you're lifting in a haphazard way, um, if your form is bad, it's worse on your joints uh, than it would be for the muscles. But controlled uh, movement is what trains the body very well. You can control movements with free weights, machines, bands, uh, or body weight. Um, so there wasn't a, there wasn't really any, he didn't necessarily say anything specific. It was more like variable resistance is better because it trains the muscles. Uh, to their max at every point of the range of motion. But variable resistance can be applied with free weights as well, where you attach bands or things like chains. Although I would not have the average person mess with variable resistance. That's a more advanced technique. You know, I wouldn't take a client who just started working out or has been training with me for three months and, and have them put chains or bands on the bar to do uh, variable resistance. So that, smart. That, the biggest qualm that I have with it is just, is just purely the amount of repetitions that you're expected to do uh you know if you do traditional weight training versus this super high intense uh way of exercising is this this the theory is that he's doing one set for let's just say bicep curls 
to you know extreme intensity. And I guess bicep curl is a bad example because it's a simple exercise. Let's take something like a squat, right? So he does uh, you know fifteen to twenty reps or something like that. Right? Twenty thirty, I think or twenty you're to thirty. So yeah. twenty thirty to absolute failure, and then they're done. Uh, the problem I have is that that's such a high skilled movement that part of uh, the adaptation process and the benefits of getting good at it is the practice of it and having to do it over and over and over to get good. Where because you I, learn the skill of it, right? So I can't I can't imagine me training one of my you know novice clients on on a technique like this where I go okay today I show the exercise because we're only gonna do it one set right so I show the exercise here's the overhead press we're or, gonna do it till you can't do it yeah anymore. we're gonna do it till you can't do it one more one time and then we're gonna move on to the next thing uh, you know I just remember how many times I had to teach and show and critique over and over and over one single exercise one of the benefits of doing traditional weight training is that I most programs are three four five sets per exercise yeah. so we get some time to practice. Yeah, but even if you're in that advanced category of people who have really good, excellent skill on all these exercises, um, even if you're one of those people, the study, there's a lot of studies have been done on this and volume is clearly a part of the formula to get muscles to strengthen and grow and to get those positive adaptations. Um, and they're very, they're looking at this from this very simplistic uh, mechanistic point of view as if Almost, and, and Mike Menser used to talk about this. I was a big fan of Mike Menser back then. I still think he was an awesome bodybuilder, and I think he did bring a lot of cool information. He was just wrong on a lot of the stuff he said. And it's this very simplistic view. It's almost like as if there's a switch that you hit. Once you hit the switch, muscle grows. And how do I hit that switch? Just go super intense one time, we hit the switch, and we're done. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple. It really isn't that simple. Yeah. There's sets and volume and reps. There's technique. You can build muscle off of moderate intensity. Olympic lifters have, have demonstrated this for decades now where they practice at a very moderate intensity, but they train quite a bit and they have these tremendous uh, strength gains. Um, studies on going to failure show that going to failure versus not going to failure uh, over a period of six weeks, 12 weeks, it's just not as effective. It's better to have a little bit more volume and not go to failure than to go to failure with less volume. We're also con not considering the effect it has on the central nervous system. Right. Um, I could take a completely deconditioned person and train them at a low intensity and do 10 sets of an exercise, and they would be okay. One set to failure would be a, a way above and beyond too intense for them. Way above and beyond would cause problems. Um, Intensity is very easily overdone. More, it's more easily overdone than even volume and frequency because volume and frequency take a lot of time. I can't, I can't help but imagine that beginner too overloading the uh, incorrect muscle we're trying to work too. Yeah, I mean, it's it's intensity is already easily over applied. Then take a novice uh, training a, a movement. And overload it and tell them you're going to take this to failure. Not to mention you're overloading the eccentric uh, portion like they wouldn't normally have, which mm. is interesting. Like I, I just think that there's a lot more in there to consider in terms of like the the highlights of of going through a natural range of motion with gravitational forces and controlling load. Uh, you know where you actually do have a little bit of relief of muscular tension going through. Uh, you know, there's a benefit to that functionally, and there's a l way more life applicable aspects to that. Yeah, and a lot of this, I mean, I mean, and this is just the truth. A lot of what he's saying is very marketing centric. So his his target was free weights, but it's obvious why because he's selling a piece of equipment that he's saying is the best muscle builder in the world. And so, who are you trying to take down off the top of the mountain? Is free weights? It's also very clickbaity, right? Free weights a waste of time. So. People are going to be like, oh my gosh, what is this guy saying? Because every other reputable coach and trainer and strength athlete says free weights are among the best uh, forms of equipment for Otherwise, we'd see training. it. Otherwise, we'd see it. Right. And when you talk about high-level sports where there's millions and millions of dollars and the, the studies that he's using and he's touting, they're not new. 
This mm-hmm. isn't cutting edge science that we're talking about right now. You know, mm-hmm. variable resistance has been around for a long time and we've known this and there's been plenty of research around. So everything that he talked about as far as what he referenced has been there. So it's not like this is a new finding. And if it was that valuable, then every professional athlete, every bodybuilder would train this way because yeah. it was superior, but it's not superior. That's why none of them do that. Yeah. And it, there's a, I mean, here's, you know, uh, Build maximum muscle with very little time, 10 minutes once a week or twice a week, and get the best results. You're like, that should be your first red flag. flag. (laughs) Exactly. There's a, it's like get rich in 30 days, you know, or lose 30 pounds in 30 days. It's, it's, it's along those lines. It's in the category of the fitness space that, um, it can be quite annoying to people who've actually trained real people, lots of real people all the time. If you're trying to maximize your results, um, and get a great physique, and uh, also maximize the time you spend. That's a, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. when 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 they say when you hear someone say ten minutes, and it's just as good as a forty five minute or hour uh, well placed uh, door done workout. Well, I know that's they just can, plain wrong. I know they can make that case too because uh, this is true. I mean, uh, you've been doing this for a very long time, Sal. Uh, compare you to. You know, somebody who it's their first week in the gym. I do believe that you could do one set of bands and it be more effective than that kid who walks in and decides to do ten sets with a bad barbell technique. Or bad, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, and Arnold's is, is known for saying that too, right? That he could come in the gym and do one set more effective than somebody spending an hour inside the gym. Yeah, but it's very misleading. It is. It, it's misleading because then everybody thinks, "Oh, I can too." It's like no, mm-hmm. because you're so advanced and you understand what you're trying to accomplish by this. Plus, don't compare yourself to someone else. Could I do one set with bands to compete with a traditional? workout for me no it would not give me the same results it would not give me the same adaptations yeah, fair. it just uh it just doesn't work that way so it's very marketing centric and very very false and free weights are among the best most versatile pieces of equipment that are around there is no machine or piece of equipment that can compare i mean there's a lot of good stuff out there and we're big yeah. advocates in utilizing things like suspension trainers, bands, and so on. Uh, but free weights are, are near the top, if not at the top, when you're looking at uh, performance. Uh, they've done lots of studies on this, by the way. They'll do like a barbell squat versus a leg press. Which one builds most muscle? And then which one improves sprint you know, speed? Which one improves uh, jump you know, uh, uh, you know, height? Which one improves uh, stability and strength in a in a everyday, you know, real world movement and the free weight exercises tend to be superior on hypertrophy alone. Sometimes machines can match, but then when you combine strength and functionality, free weights are just there. That's why they're still there. You know, those were the first resistance training uh, pieces of equipment, by the way, you know, machines, cables, bands have been around for a very long time. There's a reason why free weights haven't disappeared. They haven't. And it's because they still remain, some of the best pieces of equipment. There's a lot of you know reasons why that is. Um, the first reason, they're among the most versatile. You know, when you take a machine, um, your that machine is unless someone designed a machine specifically for you. Like I mean, with, the, I would I would make the argument that free motion is is up there, right? Because the free motion it, you can contour it to your body. There's not too many things that you can't do with a, a free, a free Ca- motion. Cables free. would be the one piece of equipment I would say would be up there with versatility because they're free, right? right? No. You're still on a track, but yeah, you're able to move at least in the direction that you want uh, your limbs to go. Right, with. but the machine is still, the free motion is still there. Yeah. It still can't go anywhere. Right, right. It's still, uh, I'm the anchor points are still relatively fixed. I mean, I can move the arms, but that's where they go. There's a top and there's a bottom. Um, free weights follow the person. I could train a 10 year old with free weights. I could train an 80 year old with free weights. I can train any movement pattern. Uh, I've trained, you know, uh, paraplegics with free weights. They follow the person. Well, you so, know, another thing that he didn't really address too, because think about your guys' clients, right? All the people that you guys train, like how often was it as cut and dry as let me draw up a program that, you know, builds you the most amount of muscle or just burns body fat. Like that was never the case. No. I always had to learn about the person and 90% of the people I trained, regardless of the goal, had underlining shit that I had to address within their program. 
So that's the other thing that when you talk about versatility and the benefits of that is, you know, I can take somebody who has discrepancies on one side and the other, and I can modify that with free weights a lot easier than I can with, with bands. You totally can. And one of the big mistakes I think a lot of people make is they look at workouts and they value them from the workout perspective and not from the skill perspective. So in other words, mm -hmm. if I'm going to go work out my legs, it really doesn't matter what I do as long as I hammer my legs. As long yeah. as my legs get as long sore, as, get growth. as long as my legs get you know grow and get stronger, it doesn't matter what I do. But it kind of does matter what you do because that skill acquisition and that practice makes a big difference. And if a person treated exercise like a, like let me put it this way, if you took a hundred people and fifty of them treated resistance training like a skill, and the other fifty only treated it like a workout, and you followed them for five years. Which group would have more success, less injuries, just better progress overall? Well, it's the example. Justin just did a Friday fitness tip, right? You taught a single single arm dumbbell snatch, right? Yeah. So hang snatch, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, uh, I got checked on that. <laughs> oh, did really you? Annoying. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, you, you could take uh, a set of bands or this this uh, apparatus this guy invented, and you could break down all the different muscles that get worked in that dumbbell snatch that Justin taught. And right. you could you could train those muscles. But you would not have the same skill set as the ability of taking that weight, getting it above your head, and stabilizing the body safely mm -hmm. yeah. with the dumbbell as you could with the bands, which when you think about real life situations, okay, it's it's not gonna look like in this uh, in this uh, elastic environment. It's going to be unstable, and that is going to carry over into what you do. Yeah, the stretch reflex uh, response, like the, there's a lot more to human movement uh, to consider uh, that you know the working with rubber bands do, like doesn't really do well with. Uh, and you know, really, it I understand from uh, a muscular perspective, like everybody wants to increase the amount of of muscles involved. That's why those stem machines and, or, yeah. and they have these like, uh, you know, uh, monitors that can show you how active your muscles are in these lifts, which is one consideration, but also what are you actually trying to do with your movement? And I think that is a, a big part of being able to actually have function and strength, uh, in, in specific directions, not just be able yeah. to squeeze really hard. Yeah. And again, bands are actually great. I love bands. I just don't think that they, you could say that weight, are a waste of time. I think weights are, uh, again, among some of the best forms of, uh, of tools for resistance training, we should say. But I mean, okay, look. Look at the real world, okay? Um, it, I'll use an example. Let me back up for a second. If I took, if you're listening right now and you had a magic wand and you could wave that over your body and literally tomorrow you wake up with an additional 15 pounds of lean body, just 15 pounds of muscle, you wake up with 15 pounds of muscle, you would feel awkward. You would move weird. You wouldn't be able to walk like you normally do. It would be hard for you to run or throw a baseball or do whatever you could do before because you haven't learned the skill of moving with that body. It's not just about building muscle. It's also about how to use that muscle. I mean, it makes no difference if your car looks like a Ferrari if under the hood, you know, as a force owner, you can't move, right? So in the real world, when you're lifting and moving things, none of them are attached to cables. None of them are on a track. None of all of them are free. If you pick up a box, you move a couch, you pick up your girlfriend when you give her a hug, whatever. All these things are free moving in the real world. And so, even if, uh, and I'm making, and this is not true, but I'll pretend like it is true. Even if uh, a machine or a band or something like that could build as much muscle as a free weight, it's still not equal because the transfer to the real world just isn't there. Mm -hmm. If I can pick up, if I can deadlift a lot of weight, that's going to transfer more to lifting things in the real world off the ground than if I could deadlift on a well, machine. you may be promoting more dysfunction in your movement, you know, for everything else. So, like, you just want to consider how you train is, that's part of specificity. So, you're going to carry that into now uh, how you lift things in the real world as well. Right. And free weights also require balance and stability. You know, doing a shoulder press on a machine, it's got some value. I'm not saying it doesn't have any value, uh, but it doesn't require me to balance the weight. Um, in fact, I could lean on the machine. In fact, if I'm holding handles on machine, I could lean back on it or pull forward. If I have poor um, stability in my thoracic spine, doesn't matter. The machine puts me in the right position. 
Now, if I'm advanced and I want to add volume and I want to isolate the shoulders, get a better pump, sure, there's some value there, but compare that to like a standing overhead press. Standing overhead press, I'm still working the shoulders, but it requires a lot of stability. Mm -hmm. It requires balance. I have to be able to stabilize my body as I hold the weight above my head. Oh, there's communication going from your fingertips all the way down to your toes. Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, everything is everything exactly. Everything is having to speak to each other where you just you simply sitting on a bench, you take half that away. Then you sit on a bench and then you do it on a track in a machine, you take another twenty five percent of that away. I mean, there's a huge difference between being able to stand up and do an overhead press and being able to shoulder press a machine 200 something pounds. I remember I had a, a buddy of mine who was, you know, strict bodybuilder um, and did, he didn't do any standing overhead press. He did lots of machine presses, seated presses. He would do seated with the dumbbells, but nothing overhead. And I remember he came to my studio and we did a workout together and I had him do overhead presses with me. And of course, he had to drop the weight because he wasn't used to standing. And stabilizing. And I remember the next day he messaged me and said, my upper mid back is sore from, from overhead presses, mm -hmm. mainly because he'd never had to really stabilize his scapula mm -hmm. the same way uh, as he did with the standing overhead press. He said, I never, he's like, I didn't realize my mid back, yeah, my upper mid back had to really support me that much. He goes, and it felt phenomenal. And he went to overhead presses for a while and saw some great development because of that. So that balance and stability aspects, one of the reasons why um, it's got some of the best carryover. Um, professional athletes or athletes in general tend to use primarily um, for general strength building free weights. Mm -hmm. uh, that tends to be still, if you go to, you know, like the 49ers gym or whatever, you see a lot of platforms and, yeah. and plates and, really, and barbells. Yeah, you'll see rubber bands, but they're purely like accessory. So there'll be like Vertimax or there'll be like things where you're just like, you're highlighting certain skills they're trying to develop. And sometimes it does help in terms of like anti-rotation and being able to try and, you know, get the athlete to respond appropriately and be able to anchor their body appropriately. But again, that's why I don't throw it out, but it's not the majority of, of the bulk of the training for them to build a foundational strength. I mean, how do you get away with this? You think that just because of that, because we do, we all agree, right? The bands are phenomenal. I mean, I think they're a great tool and I think, I think athletes use them. They use them a lot, but not more than that. They use free weights. So what is this? Is it uh, the cherry picking of the data? Is that what it is? Like, if there's so much good information that's related to like variable resistance band training that you could cherry pick all of it to try and make the case. That well, you it's could another, go. I think it's, you know, it, you can look at all these studies that he'll pull from uh, where it looks great, right? Because it doesn't put a lot of impact on the joints. You know, you can basically highlight uh, and mimic um, a muscle uh, through its, its natural strength curve. Like there's a lot of benefits it can highlight. And so it just looks like on paper, a lot of times in the lab, you know, things look really good. The numbers look awesome, but then you actually apply it to, to the athletes and it doesn't translate the same. And I think that's really what's going on. Yeah. Here. But the studies on variable resistance are not, uh, just bands versus free weights. It's free weights versus free weights with bands attached. Yeah, exactly. That's how they use variable resistance. So power lifters, um, they're the biggest, I'd say strength athletes that use variable resistance, like chains and bands. But they're not doing a band only squat for that. They tend to add it to the barbell or they don't replace their traditional lifts with it. It's a supplement. They're also at an, a, a very high level. And again, uh, have you guys ever done well, variable resistance with a beginner or intermediate client? Yeah. I, I, no, I don't. No, no, That's no. a very advanced thing that you apply. It doesn't make any sense well, for the no, beginner. Yeah, and also too, like, because the thing is with barbells, you can load, right? And you can be stable and you can load. Uh, and I think there's, there is benefit to having breaks in that tension. Think about like mimicking that like three, four, 500 pounds. Right. And, and I'm going through a squat and I never get any rest with that. How do you like detach from that? How do you not, you know, when you have a moment of, uh, you know, loss of focus, what that might potentially do with all that force, you know, throwing back down. Yeah. That's an interesting point. Cause I'm sure he makes the case that it's safer, but then I can make the case with it. With not a when you get up and wait, just like a load. Right. I, I would think that it would be, that's what the first thing I thought of was training a, a novice client, you know, there, 
they're very new to weightlifting and you're telling them to go to, I mean, I don't, we, we don't advocate for training to failure to, to a beginner in the first place. I mean, that you could, you could train and build an incredible physique and never go to failure. He's pulling from the research that talks about the benefits of going to failure and pushing that for every single set. I just think that the, you have, you increase your risk with a brand new yeah, person. Plus it pulls you to one point. So the, 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 another massive difference, because if you want to just keep adding more uh, potential weight because you want more growth and you want all this like excess muscle, uh, you, you know, when you go through that, that range, like it's, it's determining where you go. You're on this path. And then if you're anywhere off of that path, it's going to put your joints in a really weird position. Yeah, that's true. Like if you're squatting with the band, it's there's an anchor point, right? So if you go forward, it's pulling you back. If you yes. go back, it's pulling you it's forward. It's determining where you're going to go. Right. Which, um, and I, you know, imagine, <laughs> imagine failing under a heavy band. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, oh, Nobody's talking about that. Well, yeah, and, yeah. And, and to that point, you go off just a few inches and it's, it's forget the joints, the, another muscle you pull. Yep. You pull uh, you you pull another muscle that you because you get out of alignment doing that and I don't know I just can't imagine I could see how someone like this guy who's probably who uh, ironically is probably be, been lifting with you know you know uh, basic weights for twenty plus years of his life yeah. now comes out with this tool and then should okay I'm, now here, what am I going to do oh I'm going to go against weights because yeah. right yeah. I well I want to believe that after the the two plus decades of weight training consistently myself that if I just wanted to maintain a decent physique, I could totally train just this, just do bands and, and get a, have a decent physique. You could, you could look, you could get a great workout with bands. Um, here's the problem. And this is the same problem I would have with, uh, somebody who said kettlebells are the be all end all. Yeah. Or even if I had somebody said, you know, dumbbells are the be all end all. There's tremendous value in all of these tools. In fact, you're, the best results you're going to get are from utilizing each one of these tools for what they're good and best for, right? So machines are phenomenal at isolating muscles. They're excellent at that because they do all the other work for you, right? Uh, for building general muscle and strength and functional strength. Free weights are, are near the top, if not at the top. Bands are very... They're, they're very versatile. Um, you can travel with them. That's great. They don't take up a lot of space. They do have the ability to adjust the resistance within the range of motion, which is pretty cool. Um, I think they're a great tool. Do I think uh, I would just do one and not utilize any of the others? No, that would be totally silly. It's really, it just, uh, it screams um, you know, infomercial marketing. Well, it highlights part of the motivation behind us doing what we're doing, right? I mean, one of the things that we were all so annoyed about when we got in the space is the camps. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just another one of these camps that it's going to put people in. And the reality is like nobody here, at least nobody here, is knocking any of that shit and saying it's not valuable. It's incredibly valuable. The, pro the thing that we have a problem with is everybody wants to put everybody into a camp, that you belong to the powerlifting camp, you belong to the Olympic lifting, the bodybuilding camp, the mm -hmm. uh, obstacle course racing camp. When it's like, listen, all these all these different mo modalities are incredible and I think have tremendous value, and it's more about educating people on how to utilize all of them and why limit yourself to just one modality. It makes no sense when yeah. you when we have all of them at our disposal. Right. And there's this it's very smart marketing to take something. For example, if let's say you're say, you're selling a bar with band on it like this guy and you come out and say um, you know, bar with band machine is one of the greatest machines for building muscle and strength. You're not going to get nearly as much attention as you would if you tackled the sacred cow of resistance training or or free weights by saying Free weights are a waste of time. Subtitle: Buy my piece of equipment. Yeah, right? Right, it's just right it's just smart marketing. Same, same old, same old. Yeah, it's did, smart. Did it's, you say he's tied to Tony Robbins? Yeah. Did yeah. you say that? I think he was. Yeah. Oh, oh, you don't know. Yeah, you, no, no. I'm pretty sure he is. We could double check. But oh, I believe, really? Yeah, I believe he is. Yeah, it, it's been floating around for a while. I had a few people tag me back when, so it's interesting that he's he's made his way finally to Ben. Ben, he must have Ben must have got annoyed by it and decided to bring him on there. Yeah. But again, I, you know, I again, I don't think Ben's the greatest person to talk to about this because Ben utilizes the the whatever machine I forget. Ben the name. does everything. Yeah, I know he does. N name name one you know exercise modality Ben has not um, utilized or done. Uh, for himself. Ben uses free weights. Ben uses bands, uses body weight. He Isometric, trains. Isometric, everything. Isometric, he does everything. So he's, he, you know, so he's somebody that, um, again, he's that guy I would want to try all these different things. 
Um, but no, when it comes to resistance training, free weights are, they're a staple. That's what, that's what I would call them. I would call them a staple. I don't think you should ever take them. Oh, um, yeah. you, you know, know they'll never fully replace them. Yeah. But well, I mean, it's again, you, if you say something that's so sounds so controversial for the time, mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot of attention. Okay. I'll give you guys a great example in the nineties. Okay. So, you know, last century, right? The nineties. In the 90s, it was common knowledge. And when I say common knowledge, I mean it was commonly accepted, not necessarily true, but commonly accepted that low-fat diets were the way to go to lose weight. That's what we were preached to. It's what the FDA told us. It's what we learned in school. And it was the perfect timing for Atkins to come out with his low-carb Atkins diet. Now, had Atkins come out today... He wouldn't have sold nearly as many books because we've heard low carb so many times. But he comes out in the 90s and said, oh, no, eat all the fat you want. Don't eat any carbs. And he exploded. Mm-hmm. So what this guy is doing is he's coming out and saying weightlifting is a waste of time. Get some attention. Yeah. Now do this thing. But that premise is false. It's not a waste of time. Did, did, you, did you decades really? or century? What? You said century. The last century. Oh. Yeah, 1900s. Say, oh, okay. Yeah, last century. <laughs> oh, I'm just wondering if he really like uh, started ramping up his case for this because now everybody has to train at home, and and this was an opportunity to really oh, yeah. be divisive yeah. with it. Oh, right? great point. Yeah, I'm sure it's exactly that. Yeah. yeah, right. What a great what a great point. And right now when everybody's having a hard time getting dumbbells. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's get like, everybody. Oh, to, forget about all that. Yeah, you don't yeah, even need yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's funny to me, That's too. probably why he's making his rounds right now because, I, again, I, I it was at least a year, if not two years ago, I was getting tagged on this guy's stuff, and yeah. I just, I just laughed yeah, about it. Everybody was just like, "Yeah, whatever." I'll yeah. tell you what, though, it's funny to me because from okay, so from what I've read, I think it's a maybe Doug can look it up. I think his his, his piece of equipment's five hundred bucks for five hundred bucks, five hundred dollars. If I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. really? Maybe Doug can look it up just to confirm. Let me see. I thought I heard Ben say that he it like has like a barbell that fits in your suitcase attached to it. So the the, the I remember it being like this little plate that you had like a band and then like an aluminum looking bar that was attached to it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Exactly How much is it, Doug? Five forty nine. Get okay. the fuck out of here. <laughs> okay. Are you serious? All right. So so hold on for a sec. Hold on a second. So let's just say you had five hundred and fifty bucks to spend on equipment. You could buy a pair of dumbbells, an adjustable bench, and you would probably have uh, what four hundred dollars maybe left in your in your bank account, and you would have pieces of equipment that are more versatile than that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like dumbbells and a bench, adjustable bench, don't take up that much space. Now, the wow, benefit of bands is that it doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, yeah. yeah, there it is. Wow. Yeah. And it, all, it comes with four bands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this dude was like so jacked before. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's that's what I mean. Like, okay, sure. Uh, if you've put, you know, 30 years under the iron, and then you decide, you know, hey, I'm, I'm 60 now. I just want to do band work yeah. for the rest of my life. And I've got good technique. I've already got the muscle memory going on here. Like, okay, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Still think it's inferior, but I mean, that $549 is straight laughable, dude. No. no. <laughs> That's crazy. For some bands. No, I'll tell you what. If, if you were going to get any, if you had some money to spend on equipment and you had enough room for a pair of dumbbells and an adjustable bench, that, uh, I, I mean, I could train any client with that. I think that would be your best investment. When it comes to training your body, um, your best bet, if you want great results, you want to build muscle, you want to burn body fat, you want to do well. Number one, the programming has to be great. The tool doesn't matter as much as the programming. So you have to have good workout programming. But then on top of that, free weights are great. Bands have some value. Machines also have some value. And body weight exercises have some value. Don't throw mm-hmm. things out because of some marketing. All those things have lots of value. Um, and free weights are near the top. And, and don't get sold either on any one of those things just simply because you could take any of those things you just listed off and show a six-week study and show how amazing it is. That's right. Yeah. You know, anything in a small window like that is going to look amazing. I, I, yeah, put an X3 bar guy or rubber band guy here against another guy for four years. One guy gets to use weight training. One guy gets to use that. They're both at starting point and see what show me the body afterwards. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. That includes Instagram and also now on Parlor. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. Now, this doesn't mean that your body won't look different, by the way. The right. scale might say that. Yeah. Excellent. How long have you been listening to the show? Different oh, because gosh, probably muscle is much more dense than, than fat. Oh, awesome. Now, why? who is your least favorite host and why is it Justin? <laughs> Why do you always open with that? I figured you were going to ask me something like that. I'll let you answer that. I'm just 